while I'm back. Hey, it, it, it was some, you know, I'm trying to, as I'm remembering things, I'm going to be able to maybe say them. Um, the two witness rule, my goodness, did we see some funny, well, I would say funny, extremely serious stuff. This one fella, uh, Pont, I think it was his name was, yeah, from Hive. My goodness. What? Oh, when the CPS brought him in, it, you know, he, he was, um, you know, you're not going to believe this witness. <laughs> like, you know, I wish I could have picked my own witnesses. Oh, man. Uh, coming into court, apparently, he, he felt threatened coming into court and he wanted the blinds all up and all his rigmarole, you know, what they had. In early on in the case, well, oh, we've had some stories. And they're putting the screens up and then television. Oh, anyway, um, they they were all joking and laughing, you know. Anyway, he talked him out of wanting these special conditions or told him he couldn't do it. Not at this late stage, you know, not now. Anyway, he, he came in and, my goodness, what a witness. He At one time, he turned around and said, like, to... No, making friends with the judges. Well, Your Honour, uh, we 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 believe, as the Bible says, that there must be two witnesses to any offence, you know, before a case could be proven. Just like it is, Your Honour, at the court of the land, you know, like you yourselves. Yeah, he said, and their jaws dropped open, and mine, you know, he just said. That the, he believed that the law of the land was that two witnesses, unless two witnesses, you know, went along, you know, just like it says in the Bible. It was strange. It was so. Hey, at the end of the end of his um, evidence, uh, which was long and embarrassing. Oh, you never seen anything like. I one time I thought he was going to pass out, and. Um, Anyway, at the end, the, the magistrate felt he had to put him right. Had to put him right about his two-witness rule. Yeah, of course he did. He couldn't have him thinking that, you know, all these things need two witnesses. He said, you know, do not be mistaken. Uh, two witnesses, this two-witness rule business isn't, you know, law. Or, you know, it, it certainly isn't the law of the land. My goodness, he had to tell him that. He had to put him straight. And during it, he was putting his hand up. Can I ask the question? Oh, can I ask a question? No, you're not here to ask questions. You're here to answer questions. Now simply answer the questions. Oh, man, you should have seen it. It was, it was dynamite. It really was. Uh, that was a two witness rule. And others who said, oh, no, there's no two witness rule. No, no, no. We don't have none of that. Oh, and then they were showing, oh, you wouldn't believe it. There was so much stuff. Anyway, um, gradually, as it's coming back, I'm going to share it with you. So that is um, major things about the two witness rule. And, um, oh, brothers, brothers saying that um, he took one brother right through the affirm business, you know, somewhere... I affirm, I affirm that this and promise to tell the truth. And some brothers were taking the Bible and, you know, uh, swearing on the Bible, the oath, you know. And um, there, I ever thought to myself, because I've, I've been there, I've been to court and I've given affirmations and I sworn on the Bible. So uh, I, 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 was, I was a little bit glued up on, you know, what the stance was and... I believe it to be that Watchtower Bible and Track Society information is that we always affirm. We affirm. We promise to tell the truth. We don't swear on the Bible. <coughs> These in certain ones are coming in swearing on the Bible and all this. Anyway, the last guy, who was an Irish guy, oh, yeah, the Irish guy was good. I thought he was pretty honest as well, you know. He, he was an honest chap. Wow. He, he was honest. He, he, he come out with a lot of things that really helped us. Unless he couldn't, you know, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Why why, why, they, why would they say it, you know? Did they, you know, because they truly believe it. I suppose doing good. Anyway, he says that, um, what was it he said? What was it he said? Um, he said he put together the photograph. Oh, he did the affirmation business. And he said no. He would only swear on the Bible because, you know, it's God's word and, and that, you know. 
And then I think he tweaked and said, although people do affirm on it, you know, it, this is just a personal. From anywhere now, it's his personal, you know, not a not like a, a teaching of the thing. Because obviously, it, had, he, had he delved into it, he would be affirming. He wouldn't be swearing on the Bible. No, he wouldn't have been. Because he would have gone along with what the Watchtower said. Well, you know, I'd have thought so. Hey, he did these other things easily. <coughs> then he went on to say that he, because apparently they've been passing around this leaflet with my picture on it and all about me being an apostate and all this stuff. I, 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 I first I've seen of it. But apparently it'd been passed around all Kent for them to be on the watch for me. You know, it wasn't none of the official photographs they took with the man in all, you know, funny clothing in, um, in Folkestone Congregation. No, it wasn't that one. We trace, we think we know the people. They've gone through their family catalogue of photographs and they've got me in a, and they've blown me up and they've used that. You know, this is a fairly accurate picture. It's a horrible picture, really. Uh, but they've, you know, it's an, it was me, a picture of me in the background at some family gathering or something where these witnesses have got a copy of it. Anyway, uh, he says that he's the brother who put all this together. He was the brother. I was on the committee and I I, uh, I took on the task, you know, and he got this picture and, and put all this apostate and all this. And they read from the from the dictionary, the, you know, what apostate means. And then I think they might have said what Jehovah's Witness. Yeah, Jehovah's Witnesses' views of apostate, you know. It was interesting. It really was. It blew it out of the water. But he owned up to it, you know. He owned up to putting this, you know, having a committee and and putting my pay, my picture from a from a you know some dubious source, a picture of me, and um, blowing it up and putting all these defamatory, defamatory, you know, all these things about me. And um, yeah, it was really interesting. He owned up to that, you know. His brother is he's rather proud of it. He looks, you know, he, he was the brother. He did it all. He got it all around. And then others have said, hey, the other guy said he would have been up earlier. He said he didn't know nothing about this picture and he didn't know how he got it. He, he got to hear through his wife who knew someone in Dover and was spoke, speaking to them and all that stuff. Hey, we think that was the girl who provided the photo. So it all knits together. It all knits together. And, um, yeah, he, he owned up to that. And he did that other Bible thing. And, and, of course, that one was thrown out the window. He was there. He was there having an harassment charge against me. And he said that uh, he had a commotion during the prayer. And I'm being done for harassing and disturbing a meeting or something. So he says, well, did it stop the prayer? And he said, oh, no, it didn't stop the prayer. He says, uh, did you, you know. He said, no, I kept my eyes, clo eyes closed for the prayer. And um, then I went to the, you know, to the aid of all the other brothers who was all around him, you know, four or five brothers. Anyway, so he said, well, how long did this, you know, did it all last? He said, oh, no more than a couple of minutes. And he said, well, you know, that harassment, you know, a couple of minutes of, you know, after for a prayer. Any, anyway, a prayer didn't feel he needed to run and, you know, save everybody. <laughs> anyway, so that was all blown out of the water. What else did he say? Oh, yeah, he said that he clearly heard me saying, you're going to break that door. You get, you're going to break that blinking door. I was, I was saying like that. Because what they were doing, they were they were really pulling this door, you know. And I, I was just standing. I, had my, I, I may have had my foot in the way or, or something was in the way or one of their foots were on the way as they was bracing themselves, whatever they were doing. It was damaging that door, and I could see it coming off. I felt it rather, rather funny. Anyway, he says that he clearly heard me say, you're going to damage that door, you're going to break that door. And so the judges said, well, you know. So Mr. O'Hare wasn't, Mr. O'Hare wasn't doing the um, damaging the door. He was sending out a warning that the door was going to be broken, you know. Oh, yeah, it's ever so good. Well, they got see right through their evidence, you know. And he's away, so that harassment charge was dropped. And then another one, you know, was 
Mr. O'Hare was knocking on the door and he wanted to see someone and he said he wanted to talk to someone and then they went into, you know, what shepherds should be and, you know, how elders are and their positions, you know, to help people and reassure people. All the reason, you know, and they said you didn't think to reason with Mr. O'Hare and why was that, you know? Had you heard things about his character? Had you heard things? Oh, no. And, and then the photo co pictures come out that the pictures have been taken all around the congregations. And yes, they had seen them. Oh, it was it was good. And then right at the end, he said, uh, you know, for, for that reason, there's no charge, no case, no case to answer. No case to answer. And he went through five or six through mine. And then through like two or three of uh, Leon's. And, um, yeah, it was great. But, you know, I was having to dash back to Dover, you know, and I got, I got Leon to drop off, an I mate. And um, I'm dashing back, and we get a phone call. Uh, I've got to be there. But I said, the guy's turned up. The guy's there at 25 to 7. He's there wanting to put this bracelet on me. This is the same company who turned up a day late first time, and, Next time they expected me to be bracelet him and wasn't. It was, you know, catalogue of, you know, catalogue of disasters. Anyway, he was there and he weren't going to wait. <laughs> Seven o'clock, he was off. He didn't want to, he, he, he couldn't care that I was stuck in traffic. Having only been released from court at six o'clock in busy Canterbury, you know, I had to get out of Canterbury and it was so dodgy. I had to cross, go across, you know, to Folkestone and then got into Folkestone and got caught in that traffic. It was murder. You know, I mean, this is the first time I've driven around, you know, down here for a couple of months. Anyway, it was, uh, you know, build up for the bank holiday and all that. Anyway, we're through that. And hopefully going to put this uh, lead on tonight and I'm going to get it all on film. Then me and my little grandson can set to work to uh, to get round it. <laughs> anyway, that's another rant. Uh, if I think of something else in the meantime, I'll, um, I'll put it on, you know, rather than forget it.